It's a new week and so a new animal must be chosen. Today that lucky animal is the puppy face saddleback caterpillar. Quite a mouthful I know, but don't worry, the puppy face part is really just a nickname and it's more commonly known as just the saddleback caterpillar, but let's be honest that's far more boring. The saddleback clearly comes from the fact that it actually looks quite like a saddle. The caterpillar because it's a caterpillar, and the puppy face part I have no clue really. I guess someone looked at it and thought it kind of resembles a puppy from some angles, and that just makes makes me wonder if they had ever seen a puppy before. Anyway, this caterpillar is the larval stage of a moth called Acaria stimulea, a member of the family Limacodidae, also known as slug moths because the larval stage of these moths resemble slugs strongly. These caterpillars and their moths live all the way down the North American east coast from Massachusetts to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and further inland to the Great Lakes and Great Plains. They prefer warmer, more humid climates, but do still survive up in the north in New England. For this reason, you'll see a lot of these moths flying around the south in the summer months. Within this range, they tend to prefer areas that contain specific plants that they can lay their eggs on so than their larvae can eat. The favourite is palms, as they provide ample space, but in the cooler north they'll use oak leaves, maple, chestnut and many others. When they are caterpillars, they eat the plants in which they have been laid upon, as this is a quick and easy meal and the time saved by simply hatching on your food is vital to the speedy development of the caterpillar into its adult form. As previously mentioned, they are laid upon many different species of plants and can therefore eat a wide variety, from wisteria to grapevines to holly. When in moth form, they eat what all moths eat, any natural fibres like wool or silk. Eggs are laid onto the underside of a plant's leaf three days after mating, and a total of 300 will usually be deposited over this time, on various different clutches so that they don't all overwhelm a single plant. After about 10 days, the eggs will hatch and the larvae begin to feed on the leaf. There are three instars, or stages, within the larval development. It is the third and final instar that the caterpillars take the form that they are most famously known for. The previous stages, the bristles have barely developed and they are usually lime green, not their black, brown and reddish colour. After the third instar, they begin to pupate and spin themselves into a cocoon of silk in order to metamorphose into their adult moth stage. Perhaps the most interesting adaptation these caterpillars possess are their thorny bristles. These are actually incredibly venomous to humans and should not be touched at any cost. If the bristles get stuck in your skin, they can cause swelling, rashes and nausea. Even more scarily though, severe cases can result in migraines, gastrointestinal distress, asthma attacks and even hemorrhaging. However, the quicker the bristle is removed, the less likely more severe symptoms will occur, as less venom will have been secreted into your blood system. The reason for this adaptation is quite obvious. It is a defence measure against anything that might try and eat a seemingly tiny defenceless caterpillar. Their bright colours go hand in hand with their venomous nature. Aposmatism is what it is called when venomous animals display their dangerous nature to other creatures in order to warn them of attacking, like how wasps have bright yellow stripes. The coloration doesn't just stop there though, they also use the coloration for another genius purpose. The bright yellow eye-like markings that you see there are in fact in order to create a fake face to misdirect predators, because actually that is the caterpillars behind. The faces on the other end. This can easily confuse any predators that may attack it. Obviously they do face threats or they wouldn't have evolved such venomous spines, and despite these great defences they are still susceptible to one threat in particular. Braconid wasps are known to sting and inject their eggs into these caterpillars in order to provide their hatched young with a ready meal. They live as parasites in the caterpillar, eating away at its insides until they burst out well fed and ready to grow. They face few threats from humans other than pesticides using gardens, as people are keen to get rid of them when they find them, out of fear of the pain they might inflict upon an unsuspecting farmer or gardener. Overall though, the population is rather large and hard to estimate or count, so we aren't really sure how the species as a whole is doing. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.